Hey everyone, my name is Dylan Gonzalez. I'm the editorial director of GeekVibesNation.com and also a co-host of the Home Dance Film Festival podcast. And welcome to a brand new episode of No Streaming Required, your weekly deep dive into all the latest and greatest in the world of physical media. Uh, we have a fantastic episode this week. We have huge TV series making their 4K debut. We have horror favorites. Um, we have titles from 88 Films, International Films, Silent Era Films. All kinds of stuff that I am so excited to dig right into, which I'll start right now with one of the biggest titles, probably of the year uh, for some fans. Um, it is the 4K debut of Friends. This is all 10 seasons on 4K, which is something at the beginning of the year I never would have expected. Uh, but here we are. Uh, I, I'm thrilled because I was still rocking my old uh, DVD copies of these. I'd never upgraded to the Blu-ray set. Uh, but this is a very exciting release. We have uh, the, these first two seasons in one case. I got to be very careful that these discs don't pop out. So we got the first and second season here. Um, we got seasons three and four here. Because whenever I got these, almost every, t uh, uh, every case had at least one or two discs. Not floating around, but dislodged. So I like to be very careful with these. So don't, don't be, a uh, uh too crazy whenever you open yours for the first time. Here, season five and six here. You'll notice um, some seasons have two discs, some have three discs uh, for their seasons. Here's seven and eight. Um, and can't really, I, it's usually determined by episode count or some of these have like supersized episodes. Um, I wish that they would have been given a little, maybe one more disc per season, uh, just to alleviate a little bit of compression concerns. Uh, but overall, these are well spread out. This is the final two seasons. Uh, so those are uh, all 10 seasons on 23 discs. And then we have two more discs on Blu-ray for special features. Um, so we have one and two here and this booklet here that has all the episodes not descriptions just episodes here and it also doesn't give you the episode like what episode can be found on what disc but you can reasonably parse out these um so yeah here's the two disc blu-ray case um so I'm not going to explain Friends to anyone because it is literally one of the most popular TV shows of all times. Just <laughs> friends living their lives together. They're, it's hilarious. It's one of the my favorite uh, sitcoms of all time. I know uh, not everyone feels the same, but it is a fantastic show. All the cast had amazing chemistry and it was just one that I've always had a great affection for. So uh, whenever I saw that it was being released on 4K, I was thrilled. Um, like I said, I still have my DVD sets, which I will, I wanna make a clarification. Um, the original DVD sets, whenever they were released, they had some um, extended episodes that had footage uh, that had been integrated back into the episode that weren't exactly the original broadcast. They were a little bit extended for the DVD sets. Um, th this footage, um, had, ever since it had been upgraded to HD, has not been carried over due to the original like source that they were sourced from. So the Blu-ray set had the original broadcast episodes, not the extended episodes. And the same carries over for this 4K set. If you want the original extended episodes, you're going to have to hold on to your DVDs if you still have them. These are the original broadcast episodes um, as they aired. Um, it's not been edited. These aren't syndicated versions. They are just as they aired. Um, so those who have only watched stuff through mm, DVD religiously and they go to this source, they may notice that there are some moments or jokes that you may be very familiar with that aren't carried over because that's not how they were originally uh, broadcast. So I just want to make that clarification. Um, but these are as originally aired and they have been remastered 
in Dolby Vision, which shocked the hell out of me. I figured this would be HDR10, but this is in Dolby Vision. And this is an upgrade from the Blu-ray for the audio as well, because the original had lost the audio. This has been uh, given a full DTS 5.1 soundtrack. So nice audio bump uh, for uh, audio fans as well. Um, so, uh, how did these, uh, kind of compare to, uh, how did they hold up in 4k? I will say it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I wish I could like full throatedly endorse, like, this is the best set of the year. This is amazing. This is really great a lot of the time. And then there are times where you see some shortcomings to this set. And, uh, some of this, uh, I believe could be due to Warner's, insistence on some of their remastering processes are a little bit suspect at times because um, what we appreciate on this show at least is a um, retention of the original look of the show. We This was shot on film so we want this to look like nice film grain that's resolved very well, very natural looking, just everything to look very nice. This should be one of the series if they're going to remaster it in 4k it should look pretty much flawless. Um, but their processes because I think this is what they think modern audiences want, unfortunately, is it seems what they did is they did apply some DNR at points, some digital noise reduction, um, and maybe even, I'm not exactly sure of the process, but my assumption is that there are times where they maybe have degrained the image and then tried to add a layer of grain back to it, which makes it look a little bit unnatural. So there are things here and there that do not look quite right. So a lot of these episodes look fantastic especially the earlier seasons they look very very good it seems like as they got later on into the series run which i have to say i'm only human i have not watched all 236 episodes since getting this set um because it's just not possible anyone who's reviewed this set and say they have is lying but um uh, because it hasn't been out that long. But uh, I have sampled a lot from each season to try to get like a general consensus. And for the most part, this set looks fantastic. But there are times where things do not look quite great. Um, that you'll notice some of that DNR, some compression issues here and there, uh, which I said, I wish I could have got it maybe an extra disc per season to try to allevi alleviate some of that. Um, and just some of the colors as well, which the Dolby Vision really makes this pop especially compared to some of the older versions of the show uh but it can be a lot to take in visually because it's this is uh the dolby vision really makes this kind of like a hyper saturated show and it can be a lot visually to take in it's just very bold colors which is great but it's a lot of stimulus for the eyes and it, you if you watch it you'll see understand what i mean but it's just a very vibrant show in a very aggressive way um but it does look very great. This, some of the skin tones can look a little bit um, more towards the orange bronze side of the equation. So I think there are just certain things that maybe could have been tweaked and maybe a little bit more consideration to being uh, to more of the original look of the show rather than what they think modern like streaming audiences want. Maybe could have made for a better time. But overall, this is a really fantastic looking set. And it's definitely an upgrade from the old DVDs I have. I do not have the Blu-rays, but um, from what I can, from screen comparisons and stuff I've seen, this it has a much different color palette than the Blu-rays. It looks a lot more vibrant to an extent more natural um and it's it's one it's going to appeal um to each person how they uh respond to this if you are the type of person who is interested in friends in 4k i think it's definitely worth uh investing in that it, it does retain the uh more modern um widescreen presentation of this um it's been I, this isn't the type of series where you see generally a lot of like important information chopped off or anything like that, but I just want people to know this is more the widescreen, like filling your screen type of uh, presentation, but it's been preserved from the kind of the original composition. Uh, it's kind of been op like um, framed so it can kind of open things up without cutting out important information. Um, but it sounds really nice. It's nice, big, bold sound. The Dolby Vision, it looks very nice, but there are just moments here and there that don't look quite right. So it's a part of how this, this show was remastered. If maybe if another company had handled this, say like a Sony, 
uh, we may have gotten better results. So if Seinfeld ever gets this treatment, hopefully they will treat that correctly. There's a lot of uh, issues with framing and widescreen with that, that on the digital side, I won't get into because we're not talking about that. Uh, but hopefully if that ever gets a 4K or, or Blu-ray release, that Sony will uh, treat that well. But as it is, Warner Brothers, um, they have treated this pretty well, and I think fans will be happy. Um, the uh, their, the commentary tracks have been ported over. Those can be accessed on the uh, individual episodes. The Blu-ray disc, that, that includes most of the individual season episodes uh, or special features. Are, they are divided up. Like the first five seasons are on disc one. The first, the last five seasons are on disc two. There's also two new featurettes that run about 15 minutes long. I think the major thing that is missing here, which I don't understand why it's not, it wasn't included, is the reunion special that aired on Max a couple of years ago. Um, but other than that, it's a really great set. It's a, if you only have the DVD sets, I think this is a nice bump to try to like have both, uh, depending on your mood. Um, and I think fans will be pretty happy with this. Um, it's a good set from Warner Brothers. I'm very happy that there are not overlapping discs. Each disc gets its own kind of hub. Um, so, yeah, overall, a pretty positive endorsement for Friends on 4K, even if there are small things here and there that maybe could have been handled a little bit better in the restoration process. Um, one show... Uh, that is not as popular, but still insanely popular, uh, is, uh, the Netflix original, uh, Arcane League of Legends season one. Now, this is one of Netflix's most, uh, popular shows of all time, and I feel stupid because, uh, I did not know about this video game series really until this show, uh, came out. Uh, it's an insanely popular video game series, which I've learned more about in recent years, mostly because of like a podcast I listen to where people <laughs> play this, uh, which is a sad state of affairs for me. But um, as someone who is not familiar uh, with the League of Legends uh, video game series, going coming into Arcane was a very interesting prospect because I'd heard a lot of great things about this especially since season one debuted I believe in 2021 we're about to have the second and final season here in a couple months I believe it's in November we're getting that um, but we're finally get this, getting this on physical media uh, this is a fantastic show especially like even as someone who has never played the games and really knows very little about it um, this is a very uh, easy show to get into just because it's uh really great at building up the lore and while um not uh it from what i have read um it pays uh homage to a lot of the things that happen in the video game series and kind of alludes to certain things but it's not the type of uh kind of reference fest that a lot of these kind of adaptations usually tend to be that it kind of alienates like newcomers and kind of like bogs down fans of just like that just results in just like, oh, I know that, I know that, I know. It's more of like naturally integrated into the plot. And what I really appreciate about uh, Arcane um, is it, it builds this world where it mainly revolves around these two orphan sisters. And it's a, it's really a show about kind of like class dynamics and the uh, invention of like different technological advances and how they are used and how different situations kind of uh, spiral out in very uh, unforeseen ways. Uh, I'll try to be vague about the plot, but the way it starts, uh, like where we started and where we ended uh, in this first season, it's really some very dramatic turns in here. And um, I, I like how these characters progress and bonds are tested and just how this world really it takes time to develop like every single one of these characters gives them all moments of great pathos and it's all tied together with a very nuanced type of storytelling where it's not spoon feeding you every single detail this is a, a relying, relying a lot on visual storytelling which i think whenever we're dealing with like an anime series that's usually one of the types of storytelling that i gravitate to more specifically uh, because it's using the art form to its fullest extent and you're kind of getting more intellectual. It, it trusts the audience. It's not trying to speak down to anyone. It meets you on the level that you greet it at. And it's really, it's very smart. Um, and I, I've seen it called one of the best video game adaptations of all time. Um, I can I can definitely get on board with that from what I've seen. Um, and the voice cast is really great too. Um, you have Haley Steinfeld and Ella Purnell um, and a lot of other great uh, performers. So 
you have the series, the nine episodes over three discs, and then you have special features. Um, this is in 4K in Dolby Vision, from what I have heard. Um, this is not on Dolby Vision in Netflix, on Netflix, so this is kind of new and exclusive to the disc, and it looks very great in Dolby Vision. Some very bright, bold colors. All the line detail is very strong. Um, it's just a very crisp, gorgeous show. It's a brand, it's a brand new show in 2020s. Um, so you wouldn't expect it to be less than great, but it looks fantastic in Dolby Vision. I think anyone who's wanted to see this show look its absolute best will be very pleased. This does include a Dolby True HD 5.1 soundtrack. Also sounds really good. Um, you have a multi-part featurette um, documentary. You have uh, multiple scene breakdowns of different pivotal scenes. Um, some like vi like uh, like trailers and stuff. Um, and just a lot of great attention to detail is put into this package so i think any fan uh of the series will want to get this on 4k if they're 4k capable there's also a blu-ray version as well i think there's also a like a deluxe bells and whistle version with all kinds of like special trinkets and everything if you really are a big fan of the show but if you're just kind of wanting the show in its best quality i think the 4k will do you right um it's a great release from g kids and shout studios um and i'm all for more netflix shows getting physical releases so um this took a couple years for season one to come out so i'm sure with season two debuting in a couple months it'll be several years before we get that on 4k uh, but I will anxiously, so anxiously await that. But until then, I will cherish this. Arcane League of Legends Season 1 from G-Kids. It's a home run. Um, my next huge release to show off is from Paramount. Um, and it is the Paramount Scares Volume 2 4K set. So the first set came out, uh, I believe it. Well, either last year or two years ago. Um, I think it was last year. Um, and that one had the gimmick of the, um, this is kind of the, the back. Uh, this comes on the back of the uh, case. Uh, I, I slip it right in here into this box. That one had a gimmick where it had like a mystery title that you didn't know until you bought it, which ended up being Sweeney Todd, uh, which has now been released separately. Um, this time, you know, all four titles that are being uh, included, but, and I'll get into that. But first I'll show you open up the top of this set. And then you see here, um, this, a replication of Fangoria magazine, um, with, uh, Friday the 13th part two, which is the, one of the, sh uh, uh, features in here. Uh, you have breakdown or from first kill and world war Z. Um, so you can, it's a rep, like a replication, uh, with nice articles and stuff in here, uh, that kind of gets into each one of these movies. It's a really nice, uh, reproduction. Uh, you have a fold out poster, which I'll show off here. So here, it's a nice big poster almost too big for this frame um, we have some iron-on patches so you have camp crystal lake the orphan uh, world war z and then there's like a uh, breakdown license plate back here and then you have a paramount presents a logo like pin and then you have a bubble, like a bubble sticker here of Paramount Scares. Um, so that's the kind of physical stuff that you get with the package. But then, so you take this out here and underneath you have the movies, which all have this exclusive slip covers. And I'll get into each one of those here and kind of break those down. So first we have the most, uh, probably anticipated for most audiences is Friday the 13th, part two. So show that off there. And underneath the original artwork there. So Friday the 13th, part two. Um, it is pr probably most notable for uh, being the follow-up to the first one and 
uh, where that one, spoiler alert, Jason was not the killer, it was his mom. Uh, this is the first one with Jason as the killer, and um, it's a typical Friday the 13th movie. It kind of starts uh, setting up what the franchise is going to become. This Jason still has a bag on his head in this one, but he's still picking off camp counselors. I think they did the final girl from the first one dirty in this one, uh, so I'll leave it at that. But, um, uh, it's a pretty fun entry, and I know that Friday the 13th fans have been eager for that. I will go into, um, the quality of each of these here in a second. We have Breakdown, which is Kurt Russell, uh, and, uh, Elizabeth Quinlan, uh, are a couple whose cars breaks down and then all, all hell breaks loose whenever people try to help them and uh, they are trying to survive this kind of uh, insidious small town deal. Uh, World War Z, I talked about on the video attic last year whenever Scream Factor released a 4K release and I'll get into that a little bit more here in a little bit. Just a zombie tale uh, with Brad Pitt. Um, it's Pretty decent, um, but not my favorite zombie movie of the last decade. Um, and then finally, uh, one that I was very much anticipating is Orphan First Kill. It's I talked about Orphan on here a couple of months ago whenever uh, uh, Screen Factory re uh, did a new Blu-ray release. Uh, and while I wish that one would have had a 4K release, I'm glad that First Kill did get one, finally. Um, it... It manages to uh, take the uh, information you know of the twist of the first one and still pulls one over on you in the second one, this second one. Even it's a prequel, but it, it works very well. Um, so these are four pretty solid movies. Um, I like all of them to different degrees. Um, but these are all making their 4K debut in this set. Um, and how is the quality? Because it's paramount and it can be a little iffy at times with whenever they're doing their encoding and stuff. And the first Friday the 13th movie, whenever it came out to 4K, was a mess. Um, I've reviewed it for the site, but it really had just something was off with that one um, in terms of um, like the contrast levels and just like how the HDR was applied. It, it, it was... Not great, um, but these releases, they're pretty solid, especially uh, Friday the 13th Part 2 does not have, uh, to my eyes, the issues that the first one has. Um, especially, it's especially a kick in the pants whenever you see in the opening moments of the Part 2, it flashes back to the events at the end of Part 1 uh, with Mama Voorhees and all that. And I compared that to the actual 4K disc of the original Friday the 13th, and it looks so much better on part two that it just makes you wish that they could go back and remaster that 4K disc of the original and make it look as good as the second one, um, because that footage looks really great in part two, and it does not look super good in the, the actual disc. Um, everything looks pretty natural, consistent. Um, grain looks nice, pretty solid encode. Um, same goes for um, the breakdown disc, which uses the Paramount Presents 4K remaster uh, that was released on Blu-ray a couple years ago, upgrades that to 4K. Not like a night and day difference, but it's a nice bump in 4K, some nice textural details. Everything holds together pretty well. World War Z is pretty much, as far as I can tell, identical uh, to the Screen Factor release. It does not include the the unrated cut in 4K again. Um, so that's, I'm, I guess we're just never gonna get the unrated cut in 4K. Theatrical cut on 4K, where this does have an improvement over the Screen Factory disc is we now get that 7.1 DTS track that was um, missing from the Screen Factory disc. That only had a 5.1 track. This has a 7.1 track. So that for audiophiles, this is the way to watch the 4K disc. There are some special features missing. I'll get into that in just a second. Orphan First Kill, it's a brand new movie. Um, and it looks fantastic on 4K, Dolby Vision. All these have Dolby Vision, and they look very nice. DTS 5.1 sound recycled from the Blu-ray. Um, great. Um, special features-wise, um, it carries over all the special features from the previous Paramount counterparts of each. Um, so for uh, uh, the Friday the 13th, um, you have four featurettes, breakdown, we have a commentary track, three featurettes, and an alternate opening. World, World War Z, 
Um, it carries over to all the Paramount special features, which are three featurettes. There are um, uh, five featurettes and some trailers um, that are missing from the Screen Factory release, which they in included. So that's about 33 minutes of featurettes that aren't included, plus trailers uh, for those who are special features, like Complete Us. You will need to have that Screen Factory disc and this disc. And then Orphan First Kill has no special features. So um, overall, really happy with Paramount with this set. Um, I'm sure that each of these will get individual release at some point in the near future. But this is a pretty nice price as it is. I think you can get it about uh, $15 per title, about $60 uh, right now. So if you don't want to wait and you're interested in all four movies, it's a pretty solid set. You get this nice package, Fangoria, mag Replication, the poster, all that stuff, all the bells and whistles. It's a nice set from Paramount. Definitely check it out if it interests you in the slightest. And another great Paramount release um, is the Martin Scorsese 90s psychological thriller, Bringing Out the Dead with Nicolas Cage. And there you open up. You got that original cover art, which I wish would have been this cover art, but I'm not complaining because this is a really great release. Um, Scorsese, this, I really, uh, this movie really intrigues me because it's like Scorsese de delving in to his kind of love of like explore, exploration of like faith and religion because it's Nicolas Cage going through like a psychological crisis throughout this. He's a paramedic who over the course of a few days is like, he is so burnt out. He, no one will let him quit his job. Um, he is trying to care for all these people. He's seeing things. He's hearing things. He's just kind of losing his faith in his profession and if he can even do anything. And he meets a young woman played by Patricia Arquette, whose father uh, he, he is kind of takes to into the hospital, who is all, uh, at death's door, and. Basically, this is Nicolas Cage going through this kind of conscious of faith, crisis of faith, and his acceptance of what he's doing in this life and trying to just dig himself out of this hole. And he has all kinds of different partners to teach him different things along the way. So you have like Bing Rames, um, times Tom Sizemore, um, who all bring a different kind of like energy to the screen and then you have Nicolas Cage really uh like honing in on his freak level and it it's a it's a beautiful mixture of like Scorsese's control and uh Nicolas Cage's uh chaos and just like how that mixes together into like this really interesting reflection um uh, like in character study it works very well and it's a really interesting movie um, I think it's one of, like, the underrated Scorsese's from the 90s. You all obviously have, like, Goodfellas and everything, Casino, but Bringing Out the Dead's a pretty solid one. Um, this has been newly remastered in 4K in Dolby Vision. It looks really nice. Um, it holds together very well. Uh, nice compression for the most part. Um, you have a Dolby Atmos track in here, um, and you have some new special features, including a 12-minute interview with Martin Scorsese, 15-minute interview with uh, Nicolas Cage, 6-minute interview with Paul Schrader, a 9-minute interview with the director of photography, and some archival interviews and stuff the, to round things out. So very nice package um, from Paramount for this one. So Scorsese fans, buy with confidence. A lot of his movies have been getting the 4K upgrade over the past couple years. I'm thrilled because he's one of my favorite directors. So check this one out. Uh, just, it's a great release. Uh, my next kind of uh, interesting character study is from Ronan Flicks. And it is Spiral uh, from the 2000, 2007. Um, now, I want to say this is a kind of a misleading cover this makes it look like a kind of like a sla like a hardcore slasher and stuff it is not that um this is uh a more of a kind of a psychological exploration of this of this guy played by joel david moore who he's a painter he works kind of at this like mundane office job he can he's very quiet he has a supervisor played by Zachary Levi 
who, um, as of this recording today, I just saw has really went into full Trump territory, which is uh, unfortunate. <laughs> He's really went off the deep end. Uh, but I watched this before that, and it didn't really hinder my appreciation. Um, and then he kind of uh, Joel David Moore's character <laughs> uh, starts. Uh, uh, he meets this uh, young woman played by Amber Tamblin, who I really love uh, from many things, including Joan of Arcadia. And it it's like, you can tell something's off with this guy and, but he has like, there's references to like kind of his past and he's kind of like, obs uh, like obsessively sketches like certain women that is around him. And he starts to have like this, develop this relationship with Amber Tamlin's character who admittedly is in kind of the manic pixie dream girl vein. But um, other than that, it's an interesting dynamic to see develop. And I don't want to like give away anything, but it really just kind of goes more into rather than like a full blown like slasher or anything. It's more of a psychological unraveling and like how that kind of eventually evens out of this like blooms out of this character study of who this guy is. Um, overall, it works pretty well. It's not like my favorite movie I watched this week, uh, but it's a pretty interesting one. I was kind of on the on the on the fence about if I was going to cover this one or not. Um, but there's enough elements of this that I was like, okay, I think I want to try this out. And I'm glad I did. It's an interesting movie, even if it's not perfect. Worth checking out. This is from a new restoration from, uh, completed by Ronin Flicks. Um, it looks pretty, really nice, uh, nice and filmic. Um, no blemishes or anything like that. Nice color saturation, all that good stuff. Um, and it's been given a nice amount of special features as well. Um, you do get a uh, extensive behind-the-scenes documentary with new interviews from uh, Adam Green, the co-director, with Joel David Moore, um, who's co-director and lead actor, um, Zachary Levi, uh, and then the cinematographer and the editor. You also get a new commentary track and an archival uh, commentary track um, and uh, some other kind of uh, like trailers and stuff. So overall, really nice package. Um, for this film that I had not heard of from the 2000s, but uh, I probably should have considering the talent that was involved. But if, if you like this movie, it's a really good package. And uh, if you like kind of like psychological dramas and stuff, um, it's worth checking out. Uh, more uh, genre focused and kind of like, like giving you that hit of just like pure unhinged lunacy. We have Synapse Films. The Convent on 4K, uh, which opens with a fantastic uh, flashback to a young woman going into a convent and just killing a bunch of nuns. And you will, you learn later that there are reasons for this, but um, it just, it, it's such like a bold note to start on. Um, here's a nice essay in this booklet and stuff that the rest of the movie can't quite uh top that but it's still a fun movie um it's kind of a night of the demons take like kind of not rip off but kind of where um a group of kids go uh into this uh haunted house that has history uh behind it and they discover some stuff um <laughs> And including a, a gun-toting Adrian Barbeau, uh, who, uh, she is a lot of fun in this, and there's just a lot of demon mischief, and, like, people getting possessed, and taken over, and killed, and blood splatter, and all that good stuff. You have, uh, cameo appearances from, uh, Bill Mosley, from, like, The Devil's Rejects, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, and then you also have Coolio, <laughs> um, so, uh, which I wish we would have gotten more of them in this, but it's a pretty fun movie. It's a really kind of like loony, uh, horror demon movie, uh, really over the top, but in a good way. Um, and it just, it, it, it's a fun time for, for the type of people I think typically watch this show. I think you'll dig this. Um, especially if you're into like all types of horror films. Um, this is a really, really nice release from Synapse Films. This does come from a 4k, a uh, remaster of the uncut 35 millimeter inter-negative. It looks fantastic in Dolby Vision with 5.1 remastered audio. 
Um, you get two commentary tracks, some featurettes, some deleted scenes. Um, Synapse Films has done a really nice job. You have the double-sided cover art. Um, and yeah, it's just a really good release from Synapse Films. But heading over to a different type of film about faith, um, we, have, we are going over to the Kino Classics release of Monsieur Vincent. Um, this was the 1949 uh, uh, Best Foreign Language Feature uh, recipient from the Academy Awards. Um, this is about a, it's based on a real life priest um, who, uh, this is set in the time of like the Black Plague and everything. And this is like a priest dive into his interest in like taking care of the poor and taking care of the underprivileged and just like how that event, like that keeps on building throughout his career. Like at the beginning of the film, you see him kind of like chastising a town for not helping like this woman that is believed to be like stricken with the plague who ends up not. Um, and you just see him slowly learn more about like the dynamics of between the, the rich and the poor and how we should have empathy for the poor and just like it just develops until he's like an old man. And it's just like, there are people who support him, but then there are people who only support him up until a point until it like gets into kind of their, uh, that it starts affecting their lifestyle. But he is, uh, he's a real one. He wants to really help people. And it really kind of goes into that, um, idea of like, what does it mean to genuinely help people and how far are you willing to go to stick with your beliefs? It's a really fascinating uh, movie, uh, from the forties. Um, this has been restored by Studio Canal. Looks pretty nice. You'll still see some small shortcomings to the original elements here and there, but overall, pretty solid, uh, uh, re like uh, retention of everything. The sound, there's a little bit of wavering here and there, but overall, from a film from '49, um, it holds up pretty well. Um, or '47, but it was the '49 um, Academy Awards. Um, and then you have the um, a audio commentary track from Sam Deegan, who's one of the best. She's amazing. Um, and so yeah, overall good release from Kino Classics. If you're a fan of uh, international films, especially ones about religion, definitely check it out. It's a really worth a a look. Um, probably not quite anti-religion, but definitely di very different from that type of movie is Ferrero Video's release of. Riot in a Women's Prison, uh, which kind of tells you what you need to know, but it's about a a young woman who's on vacation who uh, ends up in the same space as a bunch of hippies who uh, end up pl uh, planning some of their drugs on her and that she gets arrested and she cannot prove uh, that she is innocent of the crime that she is very much innocent of, gets sent to prison. And she just, it really, it's a story about her uh, fighting for her release, but more so losing herself within like how being in prison breaks down who you are bit by bit and how it kind of desensitizes you and makes you kind of lose your innocence. And, um, even if there is justice, what does it mean? And like, what have you experienced? What have you lost by losing that time in prison? And how are these women who are in prison being treated by the people who run the prison? And there's a lot of like interesting dynamics within that, but there's also some explo exploitive moments. There's group shower scenes. Um, there are like moments of like wanton abandon where sometimes women just need uh, some warmth and companionship, if you know what I mean. So there's some of those scenes. Um, and it's, it's a really interesting movie where I've seen definitely women in prison films that are super exploitative and just like there for the titillation. This is not just that, uh, which is why I like it a little bit more. But, um, if you are someone who does want the titillation, it is definitely there. Uh, um, but it is actually a good movie that's kind of like, um, it balances like, genuinely genuine drama with kind of like the exploitative nature of the of a women in prison type of movie this is presented uh with only the english dub um so i don't i do not know if there's any release globally that has a different type of soundtrack but this is only the english dub um it sounds decent um but i just know this was is is an italian movie um so um I wish there would have been multiple language options for this, but sounds pretty decent. It doesn't 
say that it's from a new remaster. It looks pretty good, but I do not know the source of the master. So overall, pretty solid visually, uh, but I don't know a lot about it to know what efforts went into it, but it looks good. Um, but um, this also comes with an audio commentary track from Troy Howarth and Eugenio uh, Ercolani. Ercolani. Um, so good release, good movie. Um, check it out if you're interested. Uh, one restoration effort that I do know uh, a lot about is from Undercrank Pictures, Undercrank Productions, that is uh, Roland West the Bat, uh, from 1926. Um, this is kind of like an old Dark House movie where, um, you will have, uh, a man who does dress as a bat, causing mischief and plaguing the people who are, uh, staying in this house and just kind of trying to figure out who is behind kind of this terror in this house. Um, this is a pretty fun silent era movie. Uh, it's about an hour and a half long, but it never really drags. You get uh, some good uh, zaniness with some of the like the hired help who are just kind of like verklempt uh, over some of the developments and um, uh, just like the the costume design and product and all the like uh, effects that go into bringing the bat to life. I think like the makeup effects. Um, that works really well. It's kind of, it's a fun, not zany time, but like a slightly dark, but like in a quaint way, um, time, old dark house movie. Unlike most Undercrank production disc I get, this is a press disc. I do not know how long that will last. I do not know if every retailer will uh, have it, but if you do want it, I would say probably order this earlier rather than later uh, because just by the nature of the type of movies that they release they can't usually do large batches but I think this is one of their more popular titles so I would say um, if you want to press disc get this soon um, because this is a really great release uh, handled by Ben Modell who is so great with these releases he puts so much effort into these including doing a mu new musical score for this but this is from a new uh, for a new 2k restoration uh, from the uh, 35 millimeter elements uh, carried out by the uh, UCLA Film and Television Archive um, uh, in, conjunction, in conjunction with Under Crank Productions. Uh, this is a fantastic looking release. It is a film from the 1920s, so um, there are still small things here and there, but this looks fantastic. And in terms of silent film restoration, Under Crank Productions is absolutely one of the best. You do get an additional two-reel uh, comedy that runs about 18 minutes. Um, that is an additional supplement that's pretty great. You also get a nine-minute uh, documentary on Roland West um, that kind of details his career. That's just a nice uh, value-added bonus. So overall, um, great movie, great restoration, a couple of cool special features, um, and just support, like... Well, I talk about a lot of like boutique labels that are pretty big, big like Criterion and 88 Films and Shout and stuff. Undercrank Productions is really like very small, very much worth your money if you're going to like invest money in like these um, heartfelt endeavors. Definitely consider the bet. It's definitely worth checking out. Going back to the Kino world um, from Kino Lorber, we have a, a newer movie. Um, the Boy in the Woods. Um, this is a World War II era movie uh, where it's about a young boy who is um, able to escape from kind of like a Nazi camp and he goes and he ha he's like trying to survive the elements of the, in the woods um, over the course of like a year. It's a true story. And um, seeing like what he has to go through, um, it's very effective. And but I do think this is at times told in a way that's a little bit like kind of it's not a Hollywood production; it's a Canadian production. But it feel has that kind of like glossy feel of just like um, you don't get the grit of what he is going through all the time, and it's just kind of told. And like the like the editing and like kind of certain choices doesn't kind of convey the gravity of the situation at all times. Uh, but overall, it's a pretty decent movie. Um, I think there's a, there's a really nice connection between the young boy and uh, one of his uh, companion friends who he meets out in the woods, and their connection is really like the most heartfelt point of the movie. I think the most 
uh, genuinely effective moment of this series uh, of this film is um, when it, at the end you get to see some real life footage of some of the people involved in this story. Um, I'll keep it vague, but how that eventually plays out, seeing that, like a documentary on that is would probably be more effective than the movie. But overall, it's a decent movie. Uh, I just, I can't see it being like one of the essential like World War II movies, but it's it's good. Um, and we're checking, this is entirely in English, um, just for those who want to know. Um, there are no real special features besides a trailer, um, but it's a good looking disc, sounds good, solid enough, just not anything super special. Uh, dealing around the uh, World War II era, but a little bit before, something that is well, well worth your time um, is Babylon Berlin season four uh, from Megahertz uh, Choice. Um, so, Babylon Berlin, it is absolutely one of my favorite series that I've seen in like the past decade. Um, it is a German series. Whenever I first got the uh, first season set that Kino Lorber released a couple of years ago, um, I didn't expect much from it, but I was like, okay, let me, let's get into this. I was hooked immediately. This is set during kind of like the uh, in the years leading up to the rise of the Nazis in Germany, um, in the Weimar, Weimar era. So you kind of have that flapper era of like everything, everyone's kind of like, uh, living their best life and stuff, but there's like that undercurrent of something is shifting culturally and everything is leading up to this collapse that's about to come within the country. Um, and this season in particular comes about a year after a huge stock, stock market crash and it starts like right when we're getting into 1931. Um, and we all already see the seeds of this kind of uh, Nazi rebellion starting but it's not taken hold yet. Uh, and our main point into this story is like this lead detective who is investigating all these different shady things that are going on around town, but he is uh, joined by this prostitute turned young uh, female detective. Um, her arc is fantastic. I love it. Um, and just seeing them delve into all these different mysteries that unravel each season, it is just, it's so satisfying. It's just such a great series. The first uh, three seasons were originally on Netflix. If, if you got to see it, you know that this was a great uh, series. Now they're all, all four of these seasons are on uh, Megahertz Choice, uh, which um, I'm not saying do this, but if you need to sample it, there you can get like a free week trial or so. Um, but check it out. I think it'll be hooked. Um, this this season is as strong as ever. Twelve episodes. Um, like I said, it's in 1931, you get some nice mystery uh, and just like all the different developments that are happening throughout this season, they all crescendo super well. Society on the precipice of complete downfall and just how that juxtaposes like like sensibilities. I can't exactly explain in proper words why this series is so fantastic, but it just, trust me, it is so, so, so good. I love it so much. I've been waiting for this fourth season for years now, and it did not let me down. There's going to be one more season. Season five is supposed to go into production at the end of this year. I probably won't see it for like three or four years, but I'm so amped. Season four, um, no special features besides a trailer. You just get all 12 episodes over the three disc. Um, and look good, sound good, fantastic show. My final title um, is one that I know a lot of people are really excited about. It is one of the premier releases from 88 Films this year. And that is the Project A Collection with Jackie Chan. Um, so this is a two film set in 4K of uh, the Project A movies, Project A 1 and 2. So we have Project A here, the 4K disc. So here we have Jackie Chan and Sammo Hung. Uh, we got two discs here. We have postcards here. And we have Project A 2. So we have the 4K and Blu-ray disc here and postcards here. Part two, see that here. And we do have reversible cover art here. 
that's project A, that's project A part two. So these films, um, classic Jackie Chan, m like martial arts outings, um, project A specifically, uh, here's a nice booklet here. Um, it, it involves like the, the like water police joining force with the land police and the plot isn't exactly the most important part of the of these films uh but it holds together pretty well there's a little bit more plot to part two uh which involves like uh jackie and his team trying to like root out corruption of like a, the local city and There's both sides of this poster. What these films really rely on are just like really, really awesome fight scenes um, that are choreographed to perfection. Um, Jackie Chan is, and his team are known for their insane uh, stunts. And they really pull off some impressive stuff in these films. If you have their like police story, 88 films like Police Story 3 or Dragons Forever set, this is definitely of similar high quality. Um, these have both been given 4K remasters, uh, multiple cuts of each film, including like Taiwanese cuts, export cuts, like different versions um, and like different languages, including English dubs if you want them, all in Dolby Vision. All of these look really great. So there's some Atmos tracks on here, original like mono, all that good stuff. Tons of interviews, more special features than you can shake a stick at. Um, look out for my written review. You can look at everything that's included on this. Overall, 88 Films have really knocked this out of the park with Project A collection. Um, I do not think you will be disappointed if you are a fan of Hong Kong cinema. This is essential. Um, so that is my final title. Lots of great stuff this week. I hope you found something uh, that interests you. Um, I will be back again next week. Make sure you, uh, leave a comment with the, uh, the title you're most interested in. Uh, let me know what you want me to uh, talk about in the future. Make sure to share this with anyone you think might be interested in this. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the Geek Vibes Nation, uh, YouTube channel. I enjoy doing this every week. I appreciate you coming back, uh, those who return every week. And I will be back with another great slate next week. But until then, enjoy these movies. Out of 12 shifts this month, you've been late for nine. Sick four. That includes the shift where you, you came in late, you went home early. Sick, that's what I've been telling you. You're sick. You're killing me, do you know that? You've got no sick time left, according to command. I mean, I was told to terminate. It's okay, I'll just get my things out of my locker. Excuse me, it's not okay. I, I never find anything in my life, man. I'm sorry, Captain. Don't take it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tells me to fire anybody, ever. I told them, stick it right up your big one. Pardon me. <laughs> I said, you want to fire him? Come on over and do it yourself. You no, know they won't do it. It's up to you. You got to be strong. You got to be a man. I am a man. Look at these. You think they give these to sissies? Come on, kid. This is a weekend of full moons. Nobody wants to work. I mean, your partner Larry's called in sick. Okay, Larry Viva, stupid Stanley too. Come on, I need bodies out there, man. I got buses, they, they, they gotta run here. I had to put markers on 62 Young. Hey, hey, you know he's not supposed to work two nights in a row. You know who we're in for with that one? You swore that you'd fire me if I came in late again. You swore it, you swore it. I'll fire you tomorrow. <laughs>